What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. We are back yet again bringing you guys some more competitive ranked double battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we're going to be using a top tier Trick Room team for Series 2. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content anytime, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But like I mentioned, this team is a top tier Trick Room team. And just look at it. This team looks incredibly strong in the Trick Room. You got Pokemon like Iron Hands, Armourge, and Nididi, Annihilate, Torkoal, and Hatterene. If we don't set up Trick Room, we pretty much lose the match. But if we can get Trick Room rolling, we can pretty much win the match. But before we get started here with today's team preview, I want to give a huge shout out to the team creator, Clover Bells. Thank you so much for making this team and making it a rental code for all of us to use. Cannot wait to showcase it off because I love playing some Trick Room teams. But we got Ndidi starting us off with the, with the team preview with Psychic Surge and the Psychic Seats. It's got Follow Me. It's got Helping Hand with Dazzling Gleam and Trick Room. Hatterene is going to be the second Pokemon on today's team. And Hatterene and Ndidi were the best Trick Room combo in Sword and Shield. And I still feel like they are very strong in Scarlet and Violet. But it's got Magic Bounce. It has Life Orb, Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, Mystical Fire, and Trick Room. Torkoal, we got him for our third Pokemon. Torkoal is here for some big time fire damage and to take off stat changes, more importantly, onto like the Dondozo teams. It's got Drought, it has Charcoal, Eruption, Heat Wave, Clear Smog, and then Protect. We got Annihilate Brocken out here in Series 2. Haven't used him too much, but again, still a very strong Pokemon within this game with Vital Spirit and the Choice Scarf as its item. It's rocking Final Gambit, Close Combat, Shadow Claw, and U Turn, which I think is probably the best moveset for a Choice Scarf Annihilate that is used on a Trick Room team. Armrouge is going to be our fifth Pokemon. Everybody knows the combo of Indeedee and Armrouge. We have it for this team, and it is just amazing on its own as well. This one has Flash Fire, the Twisted Spoon as its item, and this Rock and Armor Cannon, Expanded Force, Trick Room, and Protect. Final Pokemon on today's team is going to be Iron Hands over here. Most of the time, people use Iron Hands for Fake Out, but this one does not have Fake Out. This is a Belly Drum Iron, Iron Hand setup. With Quirk Drive, the Citrus Berry, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, Belly Drum, and Protect. If we can set up Belly Drum with this thing, he can pretty much one-shot any Pokemon in this game. Guys, you want to run this team for yourself? Run the code is at the top right-hand corner, but let's get after it. Let's hop on that ranked up ladder. Let's grab some wins with this hard Trick Room team. First match coming at you guys, and we're going up against a semi-Trick Room machine right here with Screamtail, Golden Goat, Dragonite. I should say E-Speed Dragonite. That Pokemon is ridiculously strong. And then Skelly Dirge, Baxcalibur, and Gothitelle. That makes me definitely want to bring in Ndidi, knowing that he has the E-Speed on Dragonite. We can set that second terrain and just cancel that out right away. So I think I'm just going to lead Ndidi overall. Get that terrain rocking. Could also go into Armourage for lead. Really not bad here. It's really not that bad here. So I kind of want to lead it, but I also would like to lead like other Pokemon. Maybe I could go into Annihilate, just a uh, final gambit into somebody, take them out and kind of go from there. That's not a bad turn either. That is definitely not a bad turn either. Because he could go for the Parasol kind of combo. I'm, I'm kind of with this. I'm kind of with Annihilate here. We're going to go in DD. We are going to go Annihilate. We'll set Trick Room turn one. And then from there, we could go into Torkoal because again, Torkoal is just amazing. And we can also go into a Pokemon like Iron Hands or even Hatterene. Hatterene's very slow and it has great typing. I love it. I really do like Hatterene here. Look at that special attack. Woo! With the orb too? That can do some crazy damage. That can do some crazy damage, but Golden Go could be a problem. But that's why we bring in Torkoal. So I really like that. Let's go Hatterene. Let's go Torkoal and let's, let's look to grab ourselves a win here in match number one. But I know what you guys are probably thinking. Like, yo, Jeans, you missed an upload yesterday. I did. I did. I had a hockey game. I had other things to do. I had a little party to go to. So I did not have time to record for you guys, but it's all good. We're back on the grind. Daily uploads staying on this channel. But dude, I got cut up at my hockey game. My hands are all cut up. I cut up on my ankles. But yo, we caught that dub. 3-0. Had a goal and assist. I felt good yesterday. I actually played really good yesterday. Firing shots, making some good moves, all that good stuff. But yeah, caught that dub. Our team's very good. Our team's very, very stacked. But uh, we're back to the action here. <laughs> we're going up against Skelly Dirge and Baxcalibur. And uh, yeah, this just seems like instant Trick Room and we take out the back Caliber with the Gambit. That seems like my play all day. I'm going to go for the Gambit. I'm going to take out the back Caliber. Hopefully the back Caliber is not protecting. And we get off this Trick Room. Because if he's not protecting, then we just take it out with the Choice Scarf. Then the Skelly Dirge cannot take out my Indeedee, which is good. And then we get off Trick Room and we're kind of thriving. So, turn one's looking like it's working perfectly here. We get rid of back Caliber. We get rid of my Annihilate. Skelly Dirge is going to... Uh, send probably a Torch Song into my into my Ndidi, and then we just get to pick who we want to bring out here. Yep, there's Torch Song. We thrive. We get off that Trick Room too. That's what's so crazy about this Ndidi in this game. Like Ndidi can learn Trick Room in this game. Sword and Shield it didn't, and it was still amazingly strong, like super super strong. 
But now that it learned Strict Room, it is just ungodly, arguably the best support Pokemon in the game. So good. But from here, we could just bring out Torkoal, but I, I think we save Torkoal and we kind of go into a Pokemon more so like you. Right? I'm with it. We got the Orb going. We're going to go into Hatterene. We can follow me these shots out up until we want to use Torkoal. So I'm kind of about that. But he's going to end up going into Golden. That's definitely a little scary. That's definitely a little scary. We don't like that. So Torkoal probably would have been the play. We still have Terrasalization, which I think we have to use here. Right? We have to Terra. We definitely have to Terra. And I think we could just Helping Hand here. Because I'm not worried about the Golden Go once we get rid of... Uh, once we get rid of... Uh, gold, uh, Skelly Dirge. So I'm just going to actually Helping Hand a shot. And I'm going to try to deal as much damage as we can to the Skelly Dirge. Because Skelly Dirge is scary. It definitely is scary. But we have a perfect Terra type on our Hatterene right here. Fire. Fire to dodge the, or to, to be not very effective up against the fire moves. And the steel moves. So it works perfectly. It works perfectly here. We get Hatterene out here. We try to get Ndidi to drop out. We are going to use Helping Hand instead of follow me because I think Ndidi drops or, uh, yeah, I think Ndidi drops out regardless. And then we kind of just go from there. Because once I get out to it's just eruption, eruption, eruption. Getting after it that way. Seki's going to pop here. We're going to send it over to this slot. And how much damage are we doing this thing? Oh, yo! Hatterene! Hatterene, chill on him! Chill on him! Big time KO. That's big time KO. Now this thing is going to go for a make it rain. Drop a special attack and thank you. Took out the Ndidi. That's what, exactly what I needed. And our Hatterene was able to soak no problem. Soak no problem. Now I bring out the one and only Torkoal. Set the sun. Pop eruptions. We got speed. Trick Room is thriving. I'm telling you guys, I love to play hard Trick Room teams. Like if I was ever going to get in competitive play, these would be my, this would be my team. It would be a hard Trick Room team. I always play good with them. But he ends up going into Dragon right here. And that's not bad. I, I, I mean... We have that, uh, the terrain for how many turns? I'm guessing it's probably choice, right? We have a second terrain for three more turns. Trick room for three more turns. So you're not allowed to use E speed. It seems just, just, like, just like a simple eruption here. And I could also gleam across the board, which I think I do, right? I feel like I do, because if he doesn't terrestrialize Dragonite, then my gleam's super effective. And if he doesn't terrestrialize Golden Go, then my fire moves super effective. I'm cool with that. And, and Golden goes minus one on special attack. So, I really like where we're sitting. I really like where we're sitting. But he's going to end up using his Trastalization. Probably Dragonite, right? No, Golden goes going to get it. And what typing are you going into? You're going to go into air. I don't I don't mind that because you, you still die to this eruption and gleam, right? And you're minus one. I, I, think we, I think we got this match on lock, right? Eruption comes out here. Torkoal popping it. Chipping up some nice damage onto Golden Go and then on the Dragonite. Gleam's going to fly here. Gleam should KO Dragonite, right? It does, and now it just turns into a 1v1. Golden goes already minus one on special attack, and it's pretty much wrapped, right? What are you going to go for? A Shadow Ball here? A Power Gem. Okay, that's a little scary. Because you probably die that, right? You do die that, but again, Hatterene has two more turns left in Trick Room. You get a crit. That's a little scary, but you have two more turns left in Trick Room. This match is wraps. This match is wraps, yo. Hatterene getting out here, match number one. I really like this Pokemon. I always liked it in... uh. In what's it called? In Sword and Shield. I thought it was a cool Pokemon for Gen 8. And it's just awesome all around. Especially in Trick Room. But we end up dropping a Psychic. Connecting on Golden Go. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Getting us started here. 1-0 for today's video. I didn't realize how good I was doing in the new season. We are 9-4. and four, and We are top 3,000 in the world right now. So hopefully we can keep pushing and keep rocking out. 2,748. We're rolling strong and I'm not even trying to push. So <laughs> we're rocking out right now. But we're going up against a Roaring Moon and Flutter main team. Here for match number two with is that the fire Taurus? I believe that's fire Taurus alongside with a Moongi Moongus, uh Palafin, which is a beast, and then they also have Paloops for weather control, which I think they do bring, right? Pelper seems like a uh, like a definite bring. And then like I already mentioned, the Fluttermane, but who should I lead? Hatterene is not a bad lead here. I don't mind leading Hatterene. I mean, Trick Room we have to get out and about. It's, a, it's an absolute must. Um hmm. Hmm. What is my player? I could go Armors and DD. Armors and DD is not bad. Because I think I have Protect on you, right? Do I Protect on you, Armors? We do indeed. Okay. Yeah, I think Armors and DD is probably our play here. Really, really strong. We could save Torkoal for the back end, which I like a lot. But uh, who should I go here? I mean, Annihilate is always good, but it's more so better for like a beginning thing. But I'm thinking of just protecting Armors and then going into like a, a Trick Room. And then kind of just getting after it that way, so... I'm going to bring Torkoal, just in case he wants to bring, uh, leave Pelipper. We kind of counter that action, and then Hatterene's probably our play, right? Or do we go Iron Hands instead of a Pokemon like Hatterene? Hmm. Hmm. 
I kind of like Hatterene here, especially for tricking purposes. I'm with Hatterene. I'm definitely with Hatterene here. So we're going to lock it in. We're going to lock it down. Let's look to go back to back and keep rolling on a hot streak. Because like I said, or like you guys just saw, top 3,000. If I win this one, I'm probably top 2,500. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, considering we have just been playing random teams and just having fun. Legit just having fun and pushing high ranks. But Fluttermane and Warmoon are both going to come out here. And, okay, uh... Do I Terra? Do I Terra and Didi to guarantee his Trick Room? I think that might have to be our play, right? That might have to be our play. Terrasize and Didi just to guarantee the Trick Room. This is scary. This is a little scary. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. These two are scary right here. Because I'm thinking of just straight up protecting you. And terrestrializing you in the fairy, just so I can get off Trick Room. And then Dazzling Gleam can do some nice damage, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to protect the Armors, I'm going to set the Trick Room. And the reason I want to terrestrialize is I don't want that dark move coming in from War and Moon and just slapping me in the face, taking out my MDD. Right? That's just, that we, we just don't want to worry about that. We want to set up Trick Room. It's worth using our terrestrialization to set up the Trick Room with this team. I'm all with it. I'm all with it. Fairy Terror onto the MDD. We're not playing no games. And then if MDD survives and we can get it out here for another turn, Dazzling Gleam can do some nice damage. They're protecting the armors. Hopefully shots are coming in that way. I could see Gleams flying. Could see Third Chops flying. And there's that Third Chop. That's exactly why we tarred. 100% why we tarred. So that happens. You get a crit too. What is up with these crits on me? And Power Gem's going to fly. So I'll turn for us. So 100% why to Rasslize right there was to block that shot. And it worked out perfectly. The Trick Room is here. Cashing out. Uh, we definitely want to Gleam up here. And I could also just expand and force straight down. Um, or I can double down into you. Really depends what I want to do, but I'm just gonna, just gonna expand it for us. Do you have another dark type Pokemon on the field? That's the real question. Or on your team? Let me see. Do not. I'm I'm with just expanding force and just to do damage to Fluttermane. And then overall just popping this right here. So we end up with John Fluttermane. Who do you go into from here? Is the real question. Who do you go into? You go into Amoongus. So Amoongus just dies, right? Dead Amoongus. You die to this expanding force. Warm Moon protects, that's fine. We get rid of Amoongus, which is big time. Big time. Amoongus is gone. He's no way surviving this unless he's sashed. Unless he's sashed, but <clears throat> for the most part, no Amoongus is our ever sashed. Get it on out of here. Get it on out of here. So, War Moon's still a problem, but it knows we have Dazzling Gleam now. And the thing is here, I feel like I armor cannon into it. But I know it doesn't want to eat up a Gleam. I know it doesn't want to eat up a Gleam. I feel like I armor cannon and get rid of this Roar Moon. I really do. Because I feel like it might terrestrialize into... Into flying or something. Right? It makes the most sense. No, he doesn't. Okay, so we're just going to armor cannon it. That's fine. How much damage are we doing? Like, nothing. Kind of made a bad play there, but I tried for the read. I tried for the read. How much can Gleam do? Gleam's going to fly out here. Can we chuck up some nice damage onto that Roar Moon? Maybe even KO it? We do KO it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So I definitely should just expand it for us, but we'll see what we'll see what uh, she wants to do. Shadow Ball ends up coming into Indeedee, and I keep my armors for a little bit longer. <laughs> nice, lovely, awesome. I have Indeedee, I have armors. Taurus is gonna come out here, and this Taurus doesn't have any first turn priority. That's fine. How many turns left in Trick Room? We still have Hatterene to set another Trick Room if need be. Do we have two more turns left in Trick Room? We do. That's big time. That's big time to have two turns. So Expanded Force now flies, and I could Helping Hand, right? No first turn priority? Helping Hand, probably our best bet. Wait, I'm trying to think. No first turn priority. I know Fluttermane doesn't have it. Tauros, what do you usually rock? Raging Bull. Yeah, I think you're fine. I think I think we're good with just a Helping Hand here. I think this is wraps. I think we're just dominating today's video. We're just killing it. Tauros ends up protecting. That's fine. Are you going to double protect? Because I'm just going to do the same thing next turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the same thing next turn. Expanding Force comes out here. This should KO the Fluttermane, right? Twisted Spoon, Terrain, Helping Hand, Stab. Dump it on it. Yeah, this combo is just insane. For no reason. They, they have to buff some Pokemon to, in order to counter this, because this is just absurd. This is just absurd, but I just go into another Expanding Force. I just go into another Helping Hand, and we get the clean sweep, no problem. Clean sweep, no problem. 2-0. We're killing it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Went from 9 and 4 to 10 and 4. We are so close to being top 2,000, but I just showcased why Indeedy and Arm Rouge is so broken. That was just, that was just, I, I, I didn't like doing that. <laughs> I didn't like doing that at all to my opponent. That was just OP right there. But 
Third and final battle coming at you guys. Looking for a perfect record going up against a pretty cool team. They can set up Tailwind pretty easily. Uh, do they have any way of countering Trick Room? Maybe Imprison Fluttermane? That could be like an option. But Talonflame might be the lead. But I don't know how they're going to play this one. They have a lot of different options to kind of go into and rip into Pokemon. But, uh, hmm. Should I try for Belly Drum here? I could definitely go for a Belly Drum move. I would love to do that. That'd be sick. Because I can legit just rip through. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. True. If we lose, we lose. It's no big deal. But I just think Indeedee and Iron Hands is definitely the play. Right? Indeedee, Iron Hands, if we want to set that up. We'll bring Arm Rouge in the back end. Arm Rouge seems like you can get some work done. And then last but not least, we got to go with the hats, right? We got to go with Hatterene. Hatterene super effective onto a few of these Pokemon. Really, really solid. I like Hatterene here. I like Hatterene all around. But I'm going to try to get off this Belly Drum. If we lose, we lose. I'm not really playing to win at this point. I'm playing just to have fun and showcase this uh, team to you guys. But I would love to get off Belly Drum and just start ripping with uh, Drain Punches in the, in, in the Trick Room. That could be huge. But I wonder who they're going to go into. Maybe Hydreigon might come out here, which could be scary. But then I just Drain Punch it, right? Town Flame and Bash Calvary. Okay. The flames in the back's caliber. And I might Terra here. Do I Terra for the belly drum? Do I Terra for the belly drum? I'm thinking I might. We got that special defense boost. I could follow me. But again, I really want to set up Trick Room. I do have Protect. So you know what? Let's Protect, actually. Let's Protect. I'm thinking of just Protecting. Setting up Trick Room, dropping to follow me, setting up Belly Drum. That sounds a little bit better. That does sound a lot better. Because he's got to know I have something up my sleeve here. Going into going into Psychic Terrain, <laughs> along with, what's it called? A Fake Out user. It's just going to be tough. But he ends up terrestrializing you into straight ground. So you got to gotta be going after my boy, right? Got to be going after my, my Protect Iron Hands here. I'm going to throw up a nice little shield here. Show me that one of you guys are going after my Iron Hands. will o -Wisp into Iron Hands. Cool. I have Thermal Exchange. Wait, what? Oh, he definitely misclick there. Definitely with the misclick. Big time misclick there. Okay, EQ is looking a little scary, though. EQ is definitely looking a little scary. But he misclicked with the will o -Wisp, But even if it was going into, like, Iron Hands, we had Protect. This Trick Room is out and about. So we have Trick Room fully ready to go. I would love to pop this follow me here. What's my tower type? It's going to be Grass. Oh, yeah. We're going to Grass. We're going to Belly Drum. And I'm just going to follow me and have Indeed eye out. Because I think we eat up uh, the EQ. And then we can soak up the Talon Flame shot here as well. So we're going for it. <laughs> we're going for it. We're going for this uh, Belly Drum. Trying to pull it off for you guys. Trying to pull it off for you guys in match number three. But we end up Terrasalizing into straight Grass. Just so we're not affected by that like, ground moves. Well, we'll be affected, but we can soak really easily. So the grass tower comes out here. We got the lovely little flower pot on our head. We love it. We love it. Let's see what our opponent ends up going into. Let's see, we still have citrus berry as well. Lovely little citrus berry. And we get off the drums full of bellies. <laughs> our opponent's definitely shaking in their boots. Like, what is going on? So we get off the belly drum. And we eat up on our berry. So nom nom nom. Nom nom nom. Easy eats. EQ's definitely flying here again. And again, hopefully my Indeedee can eat this up. So we can take on the Talon Flame shot, right? Money. Perfect. Exactly what I want to happen here. Talon Flame shot comes through here. If that thing's sash, it is gone now. I really do like it. I really like that turn. But now we have to watch out for the ice move. Obviously, the ice move is going to be a problem. Definitely an ice shard, but he can't. He actually can't go for an ice shard. And from here, I mean, expanding force seems to be right? <laughs> it seems to work wonders. And now we just bring out the Wombo combo here. We'll save Hatterene for the back end. Uh, Strain Punch can definitely be your play. Wild Charge can be your play. I'm thinking of just Strain Punch taking out back Caliber and then just expanding force into you, right? It seems pretty simple. This match seems like it's wraps, right? <laughs> right? This match seems like it's wraps. Because expanding force should be able to KO Talonflame, right? It should be able to KO Town Flame. I mean, they're wasting out Tailwind turns now. I would love to get off another Drain Punch. Just so I can get some, uh, most of my HP back. But again, we gotta really hope that this, uh, Expanded Force KOs. Which I think it does. Town Flame's special defense isn't anything crazy. And Armor is a beast. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's that. There's that. I think we have two more turns left in Trick Room. 
I mean, I definitely want to drain punch that Baxcalibur down, down. I'm not not dealing with that. Looking to just punch it and get rid of it. But yeah, we got we got a sick combo coming out here. I could also just drain punch that thing, but I, I again, I want to get rid of Baxcalibur. So I'm just gonna get rid of Baxcalibur. I'm just gonna throw another armor or not armor cannon, another expanded force, and this match is pretty much wraps. Okay, he wide guards. That's fine. Considering we're just taking out Baxcalibur. There's no way Baxcalibur soaks up the shot. Yeah, go on. We're plus six with Belly Drum. Now we're full HP. This combo is broken right here. You set up Belly Drum with this thing, it gets back HP constantly. Drain Punch, Drain Punch, Drain Punch, Drain Punch. You're going. You're not surviving. You're not surviving a shot, and then we get back full HP pretty much every time. And for the most part, you you can't take out Iron Hands in one shot. For the most part. For the most part, you are not taking him out in one shot. It's just not happening. He's going to throw out his Iron Hands. His Iron Hands can't fake out. He can't throw out slides. I'm going to Drain Punch, try to knock out the Gargoyle Knock on one shot, and then Expanding Force can fly and do some nice damage. Like this a lot. So Drain Punch, Mang, Expanding Force again. If you want to Wild Guard again, that's totally fine. You can do that. It's up to you, kind sir. And then we have Hatterene in the back end, which can easily solo this, uh, this Iron Hands. It's no problem. It's no problem, yo. 3 0. Our rank's going to be in top, uh. Top, what is it? 2000. I'll show it to you guys afterwards, though, because I know you guys I know you guys like to see it sometimes. Wide Guard does come out here again. Again, that's fine. Like, I don't mind taking the damage because I'm taking you out, Guard Knuckle. You're not eating this up. EQ from the Iron Hands. Oh, what? EQ comes in from the Iron Hands. I mean, I think Armor still eats that up, right? Yeah. Armor eats that up. Iron Hands does, like, nothing to it. Then I come in here with Drain Punch plus six. See you later, Gargonackle. One tap on that thing. This is OP. This is dude. This team is this is the best Trick Room team I've used. I kid you not. So good, so good. Very easy to set up. You just have to know who to go into and how to set it up. And most of the time, we just use. I think we every battle we use indeed just to set it up. But we use different ways to set it up, right? We use different ways to set it up. Cause like first match. We just protected the arm moves. Second match, we protect, or third match, we protected the uh, the iron hands. And then in the first match, we use annihilate, which we use perfectly with it. We just uh, final gambit. But look at these stats right here. Plus six, good game, good game. GG, good game. Expanded force, dropping, drain punch, dropping. Our opponent cancels battle. We're three and zero. We are now sitting in top two thousand in the world. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. 1,504 in the world right now. We are sitting at 11 and 4. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Kind of sucks because tomorrow I'm going to change teams. And if I really want to push, this would be the team that I would want to use. This team was absolutely amazing. I love everything about it. Huge shout out to Clover Bells for making this team. I'm probably going to use it off screen just to push some ranks. Because I'm telling you, this team is the real deal. Definitely the best Trick Room team I've used in this game so far. Everything is just so perfect. Once you set up Trick Room, you pretty much have this match unlocked. Considering you have heavy attackers with Torkoal, Armouge, Iron Hands, and even Hatterene with that Life Orb was doing some crazy damage. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread spots every day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.